guys. It's the girl Victoria back to you with another review for Love and Hip Hop uh, Atlanta season 11 episode 29 called I don't know because they didn't give me the title but I'm pretty sure by next week they're gonna have the title whatever. So we still in Canada Amy and Zell and Carly Jessica Bambi they go in a hot tub talk about Spice and you know Amy lets us know that she's team Carly that's cool and you know Bambi then makes the mention that you know she pees in the hot tub. Zell try to say that's nasty, but says he pees in the hot tub. Amy says she also pees in the hot tub, but she ain't going to be telling everybody. But it's like you just told everybody. Now, people be trying to make it seem as nasty, but literally a lot of people, even those that, you know, claim that they don't, a lot of people pee in the hot tub, a lot of people pee in the pool, a lot of people pee in the shower. Like, at this point, just don't open your eyes underwater, okay? Whether you're in a hot tub, the pool, or even the bathtub. Or, I mean, people pee in the bathtub too. So I've heard. I don't take baths, so I wouldn't know. Uh, but I'm pretty sure people pee in a... Anyway. <laughs> uh, Jessica, she a little drunk, you know, and tries to, you know, flirt with Amy, take her underwater in the hot tub. Uh, Amy lets us know that Jessica did try to holler at her back in the Bahamas, try to come into her room and whatnot. And, you know, she's like, look, she's flattered, but she's strictly dickly. Look, that's fine. I'd be flattered too, you know. I don't go that way, but I appreciate that, you know, you're, I'm considered one of the people that you would take to the room. I do. Um, Jessica, she, she's she's an interesting breed. You know, I ain't gonna lie. I did like her in the beginning. Not that I don't like her now. It's just like, Jessica, you, you just, you're just very interesting to me. Very interesting, you know. I, I, I'd be concerned for you sometimes. I really do. But I think this is just your personality. That's great if that is, you know, everybody's their own person. Just for me personally, is like, I don't feel like I could have a good productive conversation with her because sometimes she just kind of does and says, says off the wall type stuff. And, you know, you know, her drinking, you know, I'm pretty sure it's all fun and games, but it's just like, just from my experiences with people who like to drink and stuff, I, I'm just not with it, uh, me personally. But, you know, to each your own. And then we're going to move on to Yandy. She FaceTimes Mendeecees because she misses him. Tells about him about all the drama going on on the trip. They end up talking about the relationship. Mendeecees seems like he's about to hang up the white or wave the white flag on the relationship. Yandy seems nervous because she, you know, for her it's forever. But it seems like it may not be forever for Mendeecees. Yeah, please. Please, I ain't trying to look. Every relationship goes through phases where it's like, are we going to continue? Are we going to be together? Y'all going to stay together. Like, I, y'all still together to this day. Like, I don't want to hear this BS. You know, I know we got to do stuff for the TV show. But, you know, they be dramatic, especially with the music. And then Andy looking so much in distress. Like, she about to cry. Okay, y'all still together, though. So, you know, once again, relationships go through things. I'm not saying that. But I know this is for the TV show. Moving on, we then have everyone meeting up for dinner. Spice and Jessica are there uh, for different reasons. You know, Spice, because, you know, she's not really trying to bring more attention because of the issue she got going on with Carly and how everyone else feels about about it, whether they're on her side or Carly's side. Jessica not there because she drunk. You know, she's at her room recovering or maybe at some in someone else's room doing what she do, you know. So, excuse me, Carly kind of says that no one's holding Spice accountable, but kind of more so saying it to Yandy. Yandy was just like, just because you don't see us holding her accountable doesn't mean we're not holding her accountable. You're just not there when we have those conversations. It's like side conversations. And that, you know, doesn't mean that the conversations don't be happening. So Amy then, you know, comes to Carly's defense saying no one, you know, reaches out to Carly one night. Yandy claims she does reach out to Carly, but Carly was like, no, if anything is me reaching out to you, not the other way around. And I guess maybe that is the case because then Yandy starts feeling bad. You know... I guess y'all would be trying to make us feel bad for Carly, but I can't fully be like, oh my gosh, Carly, like I really feel for you because this is like a every season thing. It's like y'all always want us make, to feel bad for Carly. And it's just like, but she puts herself in situations that is very questionable. So it's hard for me to feel bad for her when she be doing like ain't shit type shit. So, I mean, I mean, she be looking miserable and stuff, but it's just like she... She wants that attention clearly because, I mean, per her words, nobody really be there for her. So when you feel like no one's there for you, you, like, you crave that attention. So I feel like she definitely is milking it because she does have people on her side who do feel bad for her. Once again, do I feel bad for her? I guess, you know, it, it's, 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 it's not like, oh, my gosh, my heart is like, I have so much empathy. But it's kind of like, oh, she does kind of look genuinely sad. But I got to keep going on with life, though. 
Just like she gonna keep going on with life if someone else is, is sad. Whatever. Anywho, Yandy feels bad, so I'm just like, okay, that seems like you don't reach out to her if you're feeling bad, even though you just said you did, you know? Because if you really did reach out to her and she says, you know, it's really her, you wouldn't feel bad because you do reach out to her. So the fact that she said it's her, you realize, oh, it is her reach. So you, okay. So Yandy, you know, do better. She said she seems like an ain't shit friend to Carly. You know, Carly says she's a good friend, but sometimes she be doing ain't shit type shit. But, okay. I don't want to say karma's a bitch, but... She did. Okay. We move on then to the next morning. Carly thanks Amy for standing up for her. And then we have Spice thanking her side of the crew uh, for checking in on her because they're going to like skiing and sledding. And Spice does take some type of accountability for snapping the other night. And, you know, Sierra and Rennie, they're not going to be going on today's activities because Sierra feels like shit. Rennie kind of feels like shit. So she's going to stay back with Sierra and play mom. Okay, cool. So then we have Rennie checking on Sierra. They sit and talk a little bit about, you know, maybe possibly being pregnant, but it's just like they just don't feel well. And uh, Rennie's going to take care of Sierra, even though Rennie's not feeling 100% herself either. What? All right. It happens. Oops, excuse me. So sorry. People go on trips all the time. They don't feel good all the time. You know, this is why you just need to be prepared. You have to have your pocket pharmacy when you go on trips. Especially going to another country. You know, Canada may not feel like another country, but it's another country. So everyone goes skiing and sledding. They seem like to have they have a good time afterwards. They all eat lunch. Uh, except for Jessica and a few other people because Jessica was she drunk? Or she just wasn't feeling good. It might be both. And other people were tired, so not everybody was there. But Bambi and Spice do talk. Spice admits that, you know, she took a wrong approach in regards to the whole Carly situation. So Bambi is applauding Spice because she's showing some growth. This is all part of the plot. plot blah, 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 blah. This is all part of the plot, Bambi. So we know we're winding down to the season finale. So at this point, they got to make amends. You know, they've been going on this whole facade for this long. Like I said, I do feel like there was some truth to it that they did have a little bit of riffraff. But to this point, of course, we have to wrap it all up on good terms once we get to the season finale. And we're, I think, approaching the season finale. So y'all ain't fooling nobody. So then we get to Spice and the crew. They perform because, you know, they knew that it was going to be there. So they want Spice and the crew to perform. We really just seen Amy performing and Spice perform. And then Spice makes a, a speech and apologizes to Carly. And, you know, she immediately cries. They hug it out. And then they perform their song together. This is the first time uh, Spice ever performed that song that she had with Carly. And everybody's happy. They go on stage to dance with them. And then afterwards, uh, they go to where Sierra and Rennie made, well, mainly Sierra, made dinner for everyone. Once again, everyone's not there because some people were feeling well and were tired. And they celebrate Spice and Carly being friends again. Okay, cool. I thought that's where the episode was going to end. But clearly, that's not where the episode done ended because then we get this thing with Yandy Mendeecees because Yandy's back in Atlanta. I guess they're all back from Atlanta. And she sits and talks to Mendeecees over Bailey's. Now, I wanted to just pause right here because I'm just like, dang, I haven't, I haven't drank Bailey's in a minute. And Bailey's is actually pretty good. I like milk type milk type drinks. I actually have like a chai tea latte right here to, to sip on once I finish this video. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, when DC says he feels like he's a single parent, she's neglecting everyone on the, his side, on their end, him and the kids. And she, she's neglecting everyone's needs for what she wants. And she needs to slow the fuck down because, and pay attention to the household and the way she's moving because it doesn't feel like it's going to be forever. <sighs> and this is respectfully, no, disrespectfully, there's a door. Like she even, you know, brings his attention. Look, I do for everyone. I've been, I've been, a, I've been an actual single parent for four years while you were locked up. So like, I'm trying to get my life back together. Da, da, da. And he's just like, oh, you know, don't make that seem like it was. He was doing that intentionally. Blah blah blah. It doesn't matter, sir. She had to hold the weight down while you were gone. And now that you're back out, she's trying to pick up or trying to do everything that she's been trying to do for the past four years while you were away. So she making money for the house. I don't know exactly what Mendeecees does other than be on this show. 
It's the girl trying to make money. She's trying to make sure y'all never have to worry. Maybe she's just trying to make sure y'all money come up so you don't have to do the show. And try to think of, you know, different plots and stuff. Like, y'all still together, so I'm not buying none of this shit. But it's like, the fact that you're coming up with this stuff, like, I have to treat it like this is for real. Even though you majority be lies. But, you know, I'm treating it like it's real. So, it's like, the fact that you're coming with this after all she's done for you and stuck by your side. I'm pretty sure she ain't touched no dick. No other man's dick since she's been with your ass. Maybe a dildo. Maybe a rose. But... I, I personally feel Yandy's never stepped outside y'all relationship and stuff. Have you? Maybe. Probably. But I don't feel like Yandy has. So the fact that you want to get on her because she's trying to make moves to help build y'all empire. And I don't see you making no type of moves. Is absurd absurdity to me. I, I don't understand that part in DC's. But talking about slow the fuck down. No. I'm not going to slow the fuck down because... She had to do what she had to do to make sure they stay, you know, her and uh, whatever stay afloat. You know, I'm I'm sorry that you couldn't do that legally yourself based off of your past. You know, not to bring up your past, but like she's actually doing this legally, sir. Trying to make sure y'all y'all on the up and up with y'all money because a lot of people like to make it seem like they have money, but they really don't. She just trying to make sure y'all really actually have the money that is portrayed that y'all do. Okay, so plus you know she probably trying to you know build up her money. So y'all don't have to worry about money to help her sister slash cousin for the surrogacy type thing to give her egg or whatever, you know, situation that they got going on. So, Mindy says, I feel like you're becoming the nagging wife. You know, I understand you feel emasculated because she's handling everything. But listen, you do. Def- what is the word? If For men, it's like emasculated. But what, what, I don't necessarily know the thing for females. But she had to be the man and the woman in the relationship while he was away for like four and a half years. So let's not start, you know, acting like, oh, you know, she's not focusing on the stuff for the house. Now, granted, you know, if you really do feel that way, there's a way to come about it, to talk about it. So, you know, maybe you could compromise and stuff. But she really just doing this for the family. But you, this is where I said you can see the typical roles not be the typical roles i feel like andy's more so the go-getter the breadwinner doing what everything she can to provide for the family while mom while mendeecees just pretty much sitting back and letting her do it because that's what i'm like what are you doing other than being on the show like i don't know i mean i guess he's in a lot of different stuff from what yandy be telling us and whatnot and kind of what he tells us too but i'm sorry i really be seeing yandy trying to think of new ways to just build their empire and money versus mendeecee so mendeecee please respectfully disrespectfully there's a door okay but once again like these are the type of conversations that i guess can bring awareness to everyone but like if y'all really trying to have this type of conversation this don't need to be on camera i always say that but it's like you know if that was the case we would never have a show but at the same time it's just like you don't be like no don't don't be addressing me on this stuff on camera don't on tv no if you, you address me in the bedroom at night and stuff like like don't don't talk to me like this in front of other folks Try to make it seem like I, I'm just doing whatever I want to do. Nah, I've been doing everything for you, for the family and stuff. So now the fact that you're out, you can help. After I've been doing it by myself for four and a half years, and now I want to do what I need to do, you know, go hang out with friends. She's very much well so in her right to do that, sir. Very much in her right to do that. Had you been on your P's and Q's, she wouldn't have to be acting like this. Because you would have been there since, you know, the get-go. You wouldn't have been away for four and a half years. I mean, DCs, please, you about to piss me off. I'm not about to give y'all my energy. You know, y'all, I was already happy that y'all was sipping on some Baileys because I'm probably going to have to buy that this weekend for an event. Like, I, sir, 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 we don't have the time. We don't have, this is almost the end of the seat. We do not have the time to be cussing you out, you know, going off on you, letting you know about yourself because this is what you want from us. You want that energy? I gave you a little bit of the energy. Now I'm done. And that was the end of the episode. Okay, because I'm not about to go back and forth with a brick wall who, you know, want to be a hypocrite or want to, you know, sing or cry nanny nanny boo boo in the aspect of like, you know, oh, I'm doing everything. I feel like a single parent, blah, blah, blah. But you're not a single parent, though. But you're not a single parent, though. Yandy was like, I was the one who was the actual single parent. Yes, you were. So, I, I mean, I don't know what you're going to do, Yandy, but um, you won't need to get your man in check. You know, because clearly he's talking crazy out the side of his mouth. Like, he don't even know what you've been through in your four and a half years. You know, you don't know what he's been through in the jail. But at the same time, he needs to realize, like, you 
was holding it down for homeboy. When a lot of people would have left. So he needs to be a little bit more grateful, you know. And if it really does bother him, then, you know, he could have approached it better. Just like Spice said, she could approach it better. Mendeecees can approach it better as well. Now, does Andy do mistakes? Of course. No one's perfect. But at the same time, Mendeecees, please... Please let's don't don't even don't even start that bullshit. Do not, cause I feel like he talked about this during one of the family reunions too. Like, yeah, Mendices, please. I'm done. I'm I'm not. I'm not. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you laughed at least once, please subscribe. If you didn't laugh, look, I know you might be pissed, cause Mendices, you know what I'm saying. I'm not pissed, but it's like I'm annoyed. Um, so that's okay. Come back next week. You know, they're going to be another episode next week. Hopefully you laughed then so you can subscribe then. Okay. Comment down below what you thought about this episode. Be easy, be easy, lemon squeezy. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.